Welcome, friends. I'm so glad you're watching today. We have something really exciting to do. Today is Father's Day, and so we want to make sure that we spend a minute before we get into our worship and our teaching to focus on our dads. Our dads are so important. God has given them a really, really big job to do, and our dads do a great job doing that. We are going to say a prayer for our dads, but before we do that, I want you to take a minute and just think in your head of something that makes you feel proud about your dad. Maybe it's just something that you've seen him do that he's really, really good at, like he's really good at making baskets in, a, um, in the basketball hoop. Or maybe he mows the lawn in the coolest way and makes patterns in the grass. My dad always made the best pancakes. They were the biggest pancakes, and every Saturday morning I could count on him to make pancakes for us. So you start thinking of something you love about your dad that you tell all your friends, my dad can do, you think of it. And when we're praying, I want you to thank God for your dad, specifically for the things that make you feel so proud that he's your dad. Now, if your dad's in the room, make sure you go over and get near him and so he can hear you praying. If not, it's fine. If dad's not around right now, you can just say a prayer to God and it still will be heard by God. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to open our time in prayer and then I'll be, get quiet and let you have a minute to say your prayer at home out loud so that your dad or just so that you can speak your prayer out loud about, about your dad and giving thanks to God for who your dad is and what he means to you. So we'll I'll start us in prayer, and then when I get quiet, I want you to pray. Then I'll pray for us to go into singing, okay? So close your eyes, and let's get ready. God, you are our Heavenly Father, and you love us really, really well. One of the ways you love us is by giving us great dads. And I just pray right now that my friends would spend some time telling you all about how much they love their dad and that it would be a blessing for their dad to hear. Lord, again, I just want to thank you for the role that dads play in all of our lives. Thank you for being the best father who loves us so well, and I do ask that you would bless every dad that may be listening or every dad that was prayed for right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing now, so let's get ready. If you're not already on your feet, get up on your feet so we can sing together. I want to sing. I want to shout, I want to tell everybody what I know about. I got a light, I got to shine, it makes me dance and spin all around. I'm so excited, I just can't hide it, I cannot keep it to myself. I'm so excited, I just can't hide it, I cannot keep it to myself. So I throw my hands up.
me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. us because he loves us we know that it's true that he loves us because it's written in his word I'm gonna ask you the question that we've been asking all month long who can believe in Jesus will you say it with me I can believe in Jesus we can all believe in Jesus and it helps us to believe in Jesus when we read the Bible and hear the amazing things that Jesus did. Let's practice our memory verse together that reminds us of that truth. These are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, Mark 20, 31. I'm sorry, I said Mark. It's supposed to be John. John 20, 31. Let's do it one more time. These are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. John 20, 31. I'm so excited that y'all have been showing up and listening to these stories that we tell every, every week from the Bible that are true. And they help us to remember that Jesus really is the Christ, the Son of God himself. So I want you to go ahead and sit down with me as we get ready for our story today. The story today comes from the New Testament. And I know you know where to go for the New Testament toward the back of your Bible. It's the book of Acts we're looking for. Now Acts comes right after the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're going toward the back for the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. <gasps> Acts is where we go land for our story today let me get there Matthew Mark Luke John almost there X okay so now you're gonna look for the chapter number we're reading from chapter 9 so look for the big black 9 I found it pretty quick here and the title of our story today is Saul becomes a believer before I read this awesome story, I want to pray and ask God to help open our ears and our minds and our hearts to hear from God more about himself. So will you pray with me now? God, thank you for teaching us about yourself. Thank you for having people write down your words and your stories so that we can learn more about you. Please open our hearts and our minds Help us listen really well with our ears. Help us play, pay close attention so that we can learn more about you and how you want us to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so again, we're in Acts chapter 9. 
and the name of the story is Saul, becomes a believer. Who can believe in Jesus is the question we're talking about. And the answer is, I can believe in Jesus. But the truth is, that means everyone can believe in Jesus. And that is God's desire, is that everyone would believe in his son, Jesus. Looking back, remember this month we talked about how Jesus came to earth, was born as a baby, and then how he grew up and he lived this perfect life, and how he performed miracles. He helped people get well who were sick. He fed lots and lots of people with just a few fish and loaves, and he did amazing things, the most amazing thing. He died because he loved us. He died and then came back to life. He showed his power. He showed God's power, that he was God's son in how he lived, died, came back to life. And so this story picks up after that time, after Jesus has come back to life and he saw all of his friends and lots of people. He showed himself. He said, look, I'm alive. I am God's son. And I came back to tell you, I want you to be friends with God forever, right? But, and many people did believe in Jesus. They realized the truth at that time. But there were some who did not. And the guy we're going to talk about, Saul, at first did not believe that Jesus was God's son. In fact, he had a real problem with anybody who believed that Jesus was God's son, who believed in Jesus. And so we start with his story in chapter 9 of Acts, and we hear in verse 2 that he asks priests for letters so that he could go and gather up men and women who belonged to the way of Jesus, so the people who believed in Jesus. And these letters would let Saul take these people that believed in Jesus and put them in prison. So he really didn't like those who believed in Jesus, and he was fighting against them. Because, you see, Saul had worked really hard all his life, and he had this really long list of rules, a really long list of ways that he should live. But Jesus had come and turned everything upside down. And Jesus had come and said, The most important thing to do is to love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and all your soul, right? And then Jesus also said, love your neighbor the way you love yourself. This is the teaching that Jesus' followers were believing, that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, and that that was the only way anybody could be friends with God is if they believed in Jesus. But Saul believed in the rules that he is following. So he did not like what the believers were saying, and he was trying to stop them from telling the truth about Jesus. Well, let's continue the journey with Saul. In verse 3 we read that he was on his journey. He was approaching a city where he was going to gather up these people that believed in Jesus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and he heard... A voice speak to him. Wow. The voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? That means he heard someone call his name, Saul, Saul, why are you fighting against me? Can you guess who it was who was calling to him? Saul had no idea who it was. Because we read in verse 5 that Saul responds and says, Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. He didn't know who was speaking to him. Saul did not know Jesus. The answer was quickly spoken back to Saul. And here's the answer. And right below, continuing in verse 3, we read, I am Jesus. I am the one you are fighting against. I am the one you are opposing. So Saul thought he was following all of his rules and doing everything right, and then he met Jesus. And he found out he had been believing the wrong thing. And he was stopped by the light, and he fell to his knees, and he heard 
his voice, and then he heard Jesus. Jesus introduced himself to Saul and said, I'm Jesus, you're fighting against me, and it stopped Saul in his tracks. In fact, he was so stopped by the Lord that when he stood up after talking with Jesus, we can read in verse 8, Saul got up from the ground, he opened his eyes, and he couldn't see. So they led him by the hand. The people that were with him took him by the hand to the city he was going towards. And for three days, he was blind. He didn't eat or drink anything. He didn't know what to do. Everything he had been living his life for was going one direction, for stopping the people that believed in Jesus. And then he met Jesus. And he had to decide what to do. Was he going to believe in Jesus? He was stopped for three days, and he spent time in a house, not eating, not drinking, no distractions. He couldn't look at anything, and he waited. Well, there's another man in the story that God uses to help Saul. This man is called Ananias. And if you look in verse 17, same chapter, chapter 9, verse 17, we read that Ananias went to the house and entered it. So God had asked Ananias to go and help Saul, explain to Saul about Jesus, and pray for him that his sight would come to him. Ananias, before he went to the house, was worried because he told God, remember, uh, Saul's a bad man. He's mean and he hurts people like me. He puts people like me in jail. You want me to go talk to Saul? And the Lord told Ananias, yes, that is what I want you to do because I have important work for Saul. So we see that Ananias did listen to God and he went, he put his hands on Saul and he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Well, right away, something like that was covering Saul's eyes fell to the ground. And he could see again. He got up. And he was baptized. Okay, so we know that baptism, when somebody chooses to be baptized, it's, it means that they're telling everyone around them that they believe in Jesus. So in these three days when Saul was blind and wasn't eating, wasn't drinking, and he was waiting for his healing to come, he found out that he wanted to believe in Jesus. And then he let the whole world know. He got baptized. Well, he ate some food because he was pretty hungry at that point. And then he got his strength back. And do you know the next thing that Saul did? It says that Saul spent several days with Jesus' believers in that city. And at once, he started to teach in the churches. So he taught that Jesus is the Son of God. Wow, what a cool story. There's so much in this story that I want to talk to you about. First of all, before we get too far from it, who can believe in Jesus? We can believe in Jesus. Say it with me. I can believe in Jesus. In this story, we see that Saul was able to believe in Jesus even though he had been fighting against Jesus he had been putting people who believed in Jesus in prison. If Saul can believe in Jesus, then Jesus is for everyone. And God wants everyone to believe in Jesus. So that's something I want you to think about. Everyone can believe in Jesus. So we can help God by telling other people about believing in Jesus. We can tell them that Jesus 
is the Christ, the Son of God. We can tell them the stories we've been learning about the amazing things that Jesus did when he lived on earth. We can tell them about how Jesus died for them so that they could be friends with God forever. Very exciting stuff. There's something else I want you to think about. I want you to think about how Jesus loves everyone. So when you believe in Jesus, you want to live like he does. And we can do that because we, when we believe in Jesus, have God's Holy Spirit living in us. Remember where I read to you that Saul was filled up with God's Holy Spirit, right? And he wanted to share the love with others. He was changed. He had been fighting against people, and now he was spending time with the same people he had been fighting against because he was filled up with God's love for people because he believed in Jesus. We think about Ananias, right? He, God wanted him to go and to help Saul. Saul, he knew, had been mean to so many people like Ananias, Ananias was probably, had been hurt personally by how Saul had gone after people. And so Ananias was reminded by God that he had a job to do. He needed to go help Saul to believe in Jesus. So that's another thing we need to remember, that Jesus wants everyone to believe in him and that his love is for everyone And by God's spirit, when we believe in Jesus, we are called to love everyone. So that means if somebody hurt your feelings, if somebody was unkind to you, you can show them God's love and forgiveness. You can pray for them, for their good. That's what Ananias did. He prayed for Saul's good. He prayed that his sight would come back to him. He explained to him about Jesus. And so those are the two things I want you to think about, that Jesus wants everyone to believe in him. So let's tell people about Jesus. Let's tell them the true stories we've heard. And Jesus loves everyone and expects us as his believers by his spirit to love, to forgive, and to continue to help those around us who need to know about Jesus. Let me pray for us right now. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for um, giving people the idea to write down all that they saw so that we could read it in the Bible and hear these true stories and these amazing things that happened so that we could learn that you want everyone to be your friend, that you love everyone, and that everyone, that anyone can believe in you. I pray you will help us to live our lives in a way that we love others and that we point them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a great week.